Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the MSI. This is their MPG A1000GS PCIe 5 power supply. MSI did send me the sample, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. It is 80 plus gold certified, a bunch of other certifications and badges as well, present all throughout the retail packaging. On the back side, we have some key features, product specs, and a breakout here of all the included cables, which is a nice visualizer to see everything right there. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature, bag full of cables, and we have the power supply unit itself. Let's look at the cables and the power supply in more detail. Looking at the contents of our cable bag, we have our main power cable here that's gonna plug into the wall and to the unit. We have our four screws for our hardware kit for installation. We have two SATA cables, both gonna be identical to each other. We have one motherboard cable, as I like to call it, your ATX cable. We have two CPU cables here, or EPS cable if you prefer. They're even labeled CPU on them, right there on the side. We have a Molex cable, we have one PCIe cable included, and then we have two identical 12 volt high power cables rated for 600 watts. And I love the yellow connector that we have on here. That way you know if you don't have it plugged in properly, it's a fantastic visualization and cue when you have it connected to your GPU to make sure it's fully plugged into place. Moving on to the power supply, let's start with the back side. We have a sticker here that we can remove that explains zero fan mode to you. The fan will stop operating at low load. So if you push that on or off, you can enable or disable that. So a little note to remind you how that works. It'll still kick on when it's under a heavy load, but if you don't want the fan spinning at all under low loads, you can use the zero fan mode on an off switch power connector there. Here's your side profile MSI branding with the dragon on it. Looks pretty sweet. Here's a look at the other side, MPG. Speaking of the fan, here's the fan with the MPG branding on there. And then we can look at all of our connection options here. Two of the 12 volt for the two included cables, CPU and PCIe, and then all of your SATA and ATX down here. And then last but not least, on this side, we have our product spec. And you can see the 80 plus gold certification right there. Before going any further, let's address a common question that we get. A lot of times you'll ask, will this work with my GPU and CPU? So I went ahead, I threw together a chart that shows you the NVIDIA GPUs and the recommended wattage that they need. And we did the same thing for some popular AMD GPUs as well. Keep in mind, this is just for your GPU, so it'd be best to add an extra 100 or 150 watts for your CPU, depending on if you're using like an entry-level or mid-range CPU, or if you're using a top-of-the-line flagship CPU. But anyways, here's a look at NVIDIA GPUs first. From 550 watts all the way up to 1,000 watts, you should be able to find your model anywhere from the 3050 up to the 5090. And moving along to the AMD GPU side of things, 650 watts all the way up to 850 watts. And same thing, don't forget to add in an extra 100 to 150 watts for your CPU, whether that's Intel or AMD. Before installing the power supply in the test bench, let's see how it does with our power supply tester here. Blue is what we wanna see as we go through all the results. So far, so good here, five to five, 11.8 to 12, 3.2 to 3.3, 11.9 to 12, five to five, and a PG score of 218 milliseconds. Moving right along, 11.8 to 12 for the PCI, CPU 11.8 to 12, and then our SATA, five to five, 11.8 to 12, 3.2 to 3.3. So blue across the board, everything is working as it should. Now let's get it installed. If you haven't installed a power supply before, let me give you the big picture here. With your power supply and your PC build, you will be installing basically at a minimum CPU power, motherboard power, and your GPU power. So for the GPU with this particular power supply, most of you will be using the 600 watt cable that we have with the yellow tips. So that'll be for your next gen GPU. 
and maybe even two of those depending on what you're connecting to this. They still have the option for the PCIe if your GPU has that, but you only have one of those, so get an adapter or anything else that you may need. And then depending on your build, we have two CPU cables right here that we're gonna install in our test bench, but you might only need one, but definitely keep on the second one in case you ever need that in the future. And then we also have our ATX cable here that's gonna connect to the large header on our motherboard. So at a bare minimum, you'll be connecting the cables that you see here, and maybe even mixing and matching and adding a couple more depending on what you're adding to yours, like any sort of hubs, drives, things like that. Here's a look at all the connections up close, starting with the GPU. You'll notice that we don't have any yellow there, so that should be a standard on all cables across the board. They should have just implemented that with the 12 volt high power standard, so there's no confusion if you have the cable properly connected. There's the ATX cable connected and our two CPU cables connected. And at the wall with everything booted up, currently we're showing about 63, 67, 70, so 60 to 70 watts right at the wall, 123 volts, 0.5 amps. There's our low and high values. Those will change. And there's the current watts. For those interested in learning more about zero fan mode, it's not super clear which way it's enabled or disabled. So the good news is if the button is out, zero fan mode is on. So you can turn it off by pushing it in. And now that we pushed it in, the fan kicks on again, even though we're at just idle loads. So for low loads, the fan will spin, but if you wanna do zero fan mode, make sure the button is not pressed. So the button's gonna be sticking as far out as possible. That means that zero fan mode is now on, right? So if the button's out, it's on, and you have enabled zero fan mode, if you push it in, then you turn it off and the fan will start to spin up. So we've been stressing the power supply on our test bench here for the last half an hour using an Intel 13900K and an RTX 3080 FE GPU. Take a look, everything is where it should be. Nothing is out of the ordinary, no issues at all whatsoever. 1.29, 1.3 volts, 374 watts for our CPU. And then our GPU 0.77 volts and 319 watts for the GPU right there. So stable steady power under sustained heavy loads. Back at the wall with it under load, 852 watts is what we're showing. Kilowatt hours, 119 volts, 7.1 amps, 61 low, 883 for the high. Back to our current wattage. With the power supply under load, you know it's gonna be a good time to test out with our FLIR camera how hot everything's getting, especially with our GPU being fully maxed out here. Show around 150 degrees Fahrenheit at the connector tip and a cooler story over at the ATX cable there with the motherboard right around 100 degrees. And then the CPU coming in around 110 degrees depending on which connector. A little bit hotter there, up to 130. And then it's really toasty on the heatsink. anybody's interested. Almost 200 degrees there. Now on the power supply right here, we'll look at some of the cables. There's the ATX cable on the back side. Our CPU cables here. And then up at the top there, GPU. And then looking at the top with the fan, a little bit of heat on the bearing. And then inside internally, we can get a sneak peek. Some of those components heating up. Side profile here with a little hot spot down towards the bottom where it's making contact with the desk. And a backside view, we peaked at like one, almost 160 there. Some of those internal components through the mesh, getting nice and toasty in there. So far so good with this MSI power supply. I expect it to last for years, if not decades to come. Obviously time will tell, but we're back by that 10 year warranty so we can buy this power supply with confidence and take advantage of having two 12 volt high power connection options and that zero fan mode.